Good day, learners. Our subject for today is Science 5 for Quarter 4, Week 7 and 8. And our topic is Constellation. For the most essential learning competency, identify the star pattern that can be seen during the particular times of the year. Before we move on to our next lesson, let us review our past lesson. We have discussed eight phases of the moon. New moon, waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, last quarter, and waning crescent. We had also discussed the period it takes for the moon to complete the phase is called month. Then the moon only reflects the light coming from the sun, which is one particular example of star. The sun is an average size of the star. It is the star closest to the earth. That is why we can see it. This time, let us discuss about constellations. These are a group of stars that form clear patterns in the sky. The ancient people first observed this group of stars as outlines of animals and other objects. They found it easier to locate and remember constellation when they tried to find a clear and particular pattern the way a group of stars are engaged. For example, in the Northern Hemisphere, they have observed a group of stars which they thought looked like a dragon. And so, they called or named it as Draco. While in the Southern Hemisphere, they noticed a group of stars that seemingly formed a cross and so they call it as Southern Cross. Some of the known constellations and stars. The International Astronomical Union, or the IAU, made a list of the official modern constellations. There are 88 constellations on the list and many of these were discovered by the ancient Greeks. First, we have the Ursa Major. It resembles a big bear and it is the third largest constellation in the night sky. It includes the Big Dipper, which is composed of the seven stars, like Alka 8, Alcor, and Mizar appear as one. Alyot, Maygrace, Pegda, Merak, and Dubi. Next, we have the Cassiopeia. It consists of five stars that seem to form the letter W. It represents the Queen Cassiopeia of the mythical kingdom of Eth Ethiopia. Then we have the Orion. It is one of the most recognizable constellations in the night sky and visible throughout the world. Three of its stars form its belt. Orion's belt is also known as Asterism. On Orion's right shoulder is a red supergiant star called Betelgeuse. A bluish white star called Rigel is found on Orion's left knee. We have also the North Polar Constellations. Some of the North Polar Constellations includes the following. The Cassiopeia, the Cepheus, Ursa Major, and Ursa Minor. Cepheus is the 27th largest constellation in the northern sky. It is faint, but its definite shape makes it easy to locate if you look in the north in August and September. We have also the South Polar Constellation. Some of the South Polar constellations includes the following. 
Carina, Centaurus, and Crux. Carina constellation is located in the southern sky. Carina used to be a part of the much longer constellation Argo Navis, along with the constellation Puppies and Vela. The constellation represented the mythical, the mythical ship Argo. Next, we have the Centaurus. It is one of the largest constellations in the southern sky. It represents the centaur, the half-man, half-horse creature in Greek mythology. Centaurus contains two of the top ten brightest stars in the sky, the Alpha Centauri and the Beta Centauri. Crux is the constellation that is known as the Cross. It is a constellation centered on four stars in the southern sky in a bright portion of the Milky Way. It is among the most easily distinguished constellation. The brilliant cross is formed by bright stars, making it one of the most familiar sights to southern hemisphere observers. This time, let us discuss the usefulness of constellations. Since ancient times, constellations are always useful to people. They use the appearance of certain stars to forecast the weather. When stars are visible, they expect fair weather. But when stars are hidden behind clouds, the next day may be cloudy or rainy. Constellations are helpful to navigators too. Navigators use their knowledge in constellations in the conduct of their work. When they lost at sea, they refer to Polaris, which is in Ursa Minor. They use Polaris as their guiding star. Polaris is a fixed star. It is located at the north. By using Polaris as guide, it is easy to find the south, east, and west directions. And for that, let us answer learning task one. Prepare the materials listed below. If not available, you may use other materials at home to perform the activity. You may ask the help of your parents or guardians or any adult members of the family if needed. The title of the activity is Constellation Model. Materials, we have the black colored paper and chalk. For the procedures, first analyze the north and south polar constellations that can be seen only during certain seasons of the year. Next, draw one example of north polar constellations and one south polar constellation. After that, you are about to answer questions. The first question what particular constellation have you drawn? How can you describe such constellation? Next, how can you differentiate North Polar Constellation and South Polar Constellation? And number three, why do you think the people living in the Northern Hemisphere see constellation differently compared to those living in the Southern Hemisphere? And for learning task number two, prepare the materials listed below. If not available, you may use other materials at home to perform the activity. You may ask the help of your parents or guardians or any adult members of the family if needed. The title of the activity is Debugging Superstitious About the Stars. The materials bond paper, and ball pen. For the procedures, first, interview, interview some members of the community about the superstitious beliefs associated with the stars which they believe in. Second, 
Ask them if they know things which are related to the stars. And the third, fill in the superstitions column with the responses of your interviewees about their beliefs and practices. Fourth, using science reference materials, look for pieces of evidences that debug or remove the superstitious beliefs of your interviewees. Write them in the scientific explanation column. Here is the table that you are going to use in answering learning task number two. We have the first column, superstitious beliefs, and the second column, scientific explanation. Here are the questions for learning task number two. First, Based on the gathered data among some members of your community, what are some beliefs and practices associated with the stars they believe in? Second, based on the responses of your interviewees, how do beliefs about the stars affect their lives? And third, as a learner, how would you convince them that their beliefs and practices associated with the stars have no scientific basis. Next, we have learning task number three. Identify each constellation that can be seen at a particular time of the year. On the box provided before each number, draw a heart eyes emoji if it is a north polar constellation and wall emoji if it is a south polar constellation. So these are the pictures for learning test number three. One, two, three, four, then five. Okay, so let us answer number one. So for number one, this is a wow emoji. Number two, this is a heart eyes emoji. Number three, this is a heart eyes emoji. Number four, heart eyes emoji. And number five, wow emoji. For learning task number four, explain the information that can be obtained from the location of constellations in the sky. Consider the rubric below in doing the task. Here is the rubric. The level of performance and the description. So you will get 4 points if the main idea is clear and precise and it is supported by 5 or more supporting details. You will get 3 points. If the main idea is clear and precise and it is supported by four or more supporting details. And you will get two points if the main idea is clear and precise and it is supported by three or more supporting details. And you will get one point if the main idea is clear and precise and it is supported by two or more supporting details. Here is my possible answer. A constellation is a group of stars that appears to form a pattern. They are easily recognizable patterns that help people orient themselves using the night sky. And they are useful to navigators. Ursa Minor, Ursa Major, and Cassiopeia are constellations that are used by navigators to tell the north direction. Polaris found at the last star of the handle little deeper tells the north. It is visible in the northern hemisphere. This star is pointing towards the axis of Earth. It gives direction and location of the north celestial pole. Remember that constellations have north polar constellation and south polar constellation. For the north polar constellation, we have the following. Cassiopeia, Cepheus, Ursa Major, and Ursa Minor. And for the South Polar Constellation, we have Carina, 
Centaurus, and Crocs. For the assessment, direction, write true if the statement is correct and false if not. Do this in your notebook. For number one, Ursa Major resembles a big bear and it is the third largest constellation in the night sky. Number two, constellations are a group of stars that form clear patterns in the sky. Number three, some of the north polar constellations include the following, Carina, Centaurus, and Crux. Number four, Centaurus represent the centaur, the half-man, half-horse creature in Greek mythology. And number five, since ancient times, constellations are not helpful to people. Let us now answer the assessment. So for number one, is your answer true? For number one, then you are correct. Number two, if your answer is true, then you are correct. Number three, if your answer is false, then you are correct. Number four, if your answer is true, then you are correct. And number five, if your answer is false, perfect. You got it right. And that concludes our discussion about the topic constellations. I hope that you learn a lot from this topic. Thank you very much and God bless everyone.